Hello. My name is Timothy Trespass, and I am a targeted individual. I'm also standing in the sun, so I cannot see what I look like on this camera, nor do I know if my face is in the frame. But I'm going to try it anyway. Uh, it's finally a beautiful day here in New York, and after three or four days of whatever kind of torture this is, electromagnetic uh, stimulation by frequency uh, of the stuff they put inside of me, quantum dots, more gallons, I don't know, whatever it is, they turn it on, it goes in my head, 24 hours, 7 days, 365. It goes up and down, makes me sick, makes me puke, makes me anxious, makes me nervous, gives me fear, you know, diarrhea, you name it. You go through the whole gamut of crap with this thing, because all they got to do is change the information they're feeding you. And when they've drugged you with, with, you know, crazy drugs and run you around and tried to scare the shit out of you for a year or two or three or four, and they record all of that... And they can play it back to you. It's your emotional state being uh, vibrated back to your own nervous system. And, of course, your brain entrains to your own emotional brain state and body state, you know. The heart, heart gives off a lot of power. Something like 10, 12 meters away, you can measure the power of the, the RF output of the heart. And, and that's not including the scalar and biophotonic emissions that the genetics give off. Anyway, let's see if I can tell this story quick in, in you know, seven minutes or less. Petra and I lived in another room we were renting from some nice people who asked us to move out so their daughter could move back in because of relationship problems. They were very nice. They gave us a couple of months rent-free to get enough money to find a place and move. They were very kind, very good people. God bless them. Thank you. Um, we were anxious to get out of there because we felt bad we were taking advantage of these people. We didn't want to take advantage of them. Um, so we found a place a few blocks away, and uh, Rosa and Segundo and their daughter were very happy to meet us and welcomed us into their family and kissed our hand and, and uh, you know, we made, made each other food and, and tutored their daughter in her schoolwork. And, and, and then everything was fine, you know, and then about three months, uh, well, okay, not everything. Petra had spent two months, three months washing every single thing we owned so that we wouldn't bring any of those flitty, jumpy, Morgellons, biting, fiber, bug, creature, stuff, whatever it is, with us, because we didn't want to give it to anyone else. When we moved in, two weeks, or a week after we moved in, as soon as we set up the bed and, and got things unpacked a little, somebody came and gave us a little present. And we were suddenly infested again with little jumpy, bumpy, flighty, bitey, flitty things that would change color. And, you know, we had to, Petra, I was too sick to do it. I couldn't deal with it. And she washed everything again, the walls, the floor, the ceiling, every day, wiping it with oil and, and detergents. Okay, so finally this thing went away. Uh, you know, then a few months into this thing, you know, we had a little bit of calm time, a little bit of uh, enjoyment, relaxation, and, and, you know, for the place we paid money for. Then, at the time, we didn't know it, but the owner of the building, um, whose name I can't recall at this moment, got his work permit. always looking for shoes for Patreon because they always get destroyed. Got his work permit and their work permit from the architect and they paid all this money and, and it's going to be, uh, they want to rip out the bathrooms and, and change the plumbing and they're pulling out all the radiators and they're move, you know, they're going to re, re do everything. Um, and that's because the, uh, 
neighborhood is gentrifying so quickly, and uh, whatever. As I just walked by this place, we were going to rent from these people, but they were complete and total liars, and didn't want to rent to us anyway. Anyway, um, so completely lost my train of thought. I got the building permit. We didn't know it yet. And then uh, Segundo and his wife became cold, distant, and, you know, they were having all these meetings with the super and the super's wife and, and, and some person we didn't know. And, you know. It's hard to know what's going on. We don't really speak Spanish that much. A few words. Anyway, they started doing things like... Um, banging on the door, all three of them, really loud, you know, first thing in the morning when they know we don't get up until 10 or 11 because we have insomnia and everything else, and d demanding stuff and, and arguing with us and calling us, can you come over to the kitchen? We want to talk to you, so we come over and like, you know, they had an electric bill that was two months in one bill, and he's telling us about how much it costs, and da 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 da, and we're like, look, this is two months here, and he rips it out of our hand, and, and I got really upset, and I started yelling and telling him, this is not fair, what, what are you trying to do to us, you know? Oh, excuse me, before the electric bill, he came and told us that we had to move out, we had just moved in, we said, what are you talking about? We, we moved in, we got had a verbal contract with you, um... It, you know, we asked you eight times about your lease. When was it up? Oh, not for another year. We've been here for eight years. You know, uh, you can stay here for a year at least, long term, no problem. Um, so then he told us, oh, we got to move out. This is before the electric bill thing. And why? Because the landlord had told them that, oh, yeah, you can just go, go rent a room here somewhere for a while, move your whole family out. And we're going to move the kitchen and the bathroom and make it all nice. And then uh, you can move back in and we'll give you a new lease. No problem. Don't worry about it. It happens all the time. And we told them, what are you, crazy? You're going to move everything out, go spend money in a room, and then come back here hoping that he'll give you a new lease? You're going to find somebody else living here and he's going to say, who the fuck are you? I've seen it happen over and over again. Oh, don't worry. You can keep your stuff in the basement. You know, you come back, there's nothing there, somebody else is living in your house, and you have no rights, because you walked away. So, you know, we explained all this to him, we explained due process, we explained, uh, you know, his right as, as a, a tenant to, to have a place and to... Uh, anyway, so he decided, I guess, that he wasn't going to... Either that we weren't going to leave, or he didn't want to leave, whatever, and then the, the phone, the electric bill thing and he, and I started yelling I said this is wrong what you're doing is wrong you're demanding all this money from us you just told us we got to move out it cost us you know a thousand fifteen hundred dollars to get in here so, you know we had to pay the mover we had all this it was wrong and uh, so he's standing by the door he won't let me leave he's calling the police and I'm like, let me out of here. I had to walk to the other side of the room, and Patriot said, you have to let my husband out of this room. Get away from the door and let him out. So they did. And that began a, a, a series of, of events of harassment and abuse from the nice people that we had rented from. And uh, they would do this kind of stuff over and over. They would, uh, you know, we moved everything out of my storage locker to close the storage locker. And we had it mostly stuffed in a little 8x10, 8x12 room we lived in. And some in the hallway. And he's screaming at us, you got to move us out of the hallway right now. And I just woke up. I got a headache. I'm, I'm sick. I'm like, okay, fine. Whatever you say, I'll do it in an hour. Just please don't yell at me. And he's yelling and yelling. And finally I yell at him. I'm like, look, I'll do what you want. Just stop bothering me. So he calls the police again. You know, this is a... Um, a regular thing with him because he was trying to make a pattern of me being, you know, some kind of crazy, violent, angry person. But the police came, said, what's the matter? I said, there's no problem here. You know, he asked me to move the stuff. I'm going to move the stuff. He's screaming and yelling at me. I, I don't know what the problem is. So the officer said, oh, you got to get along and left, whatever. You know, every time this guy would... would... <sighs> so this went on over and over again. 
then one day, they show up at the door, you know, after a whole month of going back and forth with them telling us, oh, the, the landlord, the super, and some construction, the landlord, they're going to come and they're going to, they want to rip out the walls and the closet and the ceiling and the fireplace in your room uh, and start construction. And we said, no, th there's no way we're going to allow that. We're renting this room. We've paid you for it. And we have the right to peaceable enjoyment of it. And, uh... You know, this went back and forth, so they, they banging on the door early in the morning, six o'clock, whatever, okay, we're here to rip out the walls. And I'm, I'm just throwing up, and I come outside, and I'm like, excuse me, what? I, I'm not sure I understand you. And we're gonna rip out the walls. I said, okay, no, I'm sorry, but you can't. And I closed the door. And, uh, so they're all yelling and screaming, and, oh, we're going to get you out, we're going to do this, we're going to blah, blah, blah. And, and, you know, throw all your stuff in the street, and, you know, all of this crap. So we're talking to the super, we're like, look, what are you doing? You can't just, you know, constructively evict us. It's illegal. And, and we're not going to stand for it if we can help it. And, uh, and he's like nodding his head, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And we're like, you know, trying to talk to him like a human being and, and, and find some common ground that, you know, we're both trying to live our lives and we understand he has a job, but, you know, there's a process to this. You know, it's cost us thousands of dollars to get in here and, and, and we've had nothing but trauma and abuse. And, uh, you know, they're taking advantage of the fact, exploiting the fact that I'm disabled. You know, that's, that's discriminatory, it's harassment, and it's criminal. Um, so anyway, the landlord, the, the super's telling me, oh, the landlord's coming, the landlord's coming, the building owner's coming, don't worry. So, uh, you know, fine, we wait, and this guy comes, and he comes upstairs, he starts screaming at us, I'm going to call the fire department and have you violated a fire violation, I'm going to find something wrong, I'm going to throw your shit in the street, I'm going to have the marshal come, put you out, I'm going to, you know, he's screaming at us. Of course, I didn't think to get my video camera because I'm like in such a shock. And um, the, uh, you know, we follow him downstairs and, and we're like, you know, can't you be a reasonable person? Uh, isn't there some way we can work this out to all, both of our benefit? Uh, you know, and he's like, no, everything's going to change. We're going to get you out of here. Blah, blah. And he drives off. And it's, he's not even the landlord. This is the guy that, that works for the landlord. Now this guy, this landlord guy, I, I don't know what his deal is. He's, he's got rent controlled and rent stabilized people living in these apartments. And he's not reporting it properly to the city. And he's, you know, claiming that they're exempt when they're not. He's claiming that the rent is higher than it was. He's claim, you know, he's claiming all this stuff. He's, he's this guy who sold the, bought the building, sold it to himself for ten dollars in valuable consideration, then sold it to himself again through three companies. Uh, you know, uh, for whatever reason, to change the balance on the books and not pay so much taxes or whatever. You know, is it legal? Yes, it's legal. Is it? You know, ethical is it? Is it? Well, you know, accounting. That's what accounting does. It, 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 you know, put an entry over here, balance an entry over there. It's all bookkeeping, and what's on paper is not what's really going on anymore. You know, so he's playing these. I, I don't know, fast and loose. And we go to the Department of Housing and Preservation, and we ask for the printout that's supposed to be the registration of the thing, and every you know, rent in this rent control, rent stabilized, and then suddenly exempt after fifteen hundred dollars, when the thing is really two thousand dollars that it has to reach before it goes. Anyway, he 